In this video, I'm going to uh, show you how I, or at least my approach to sculpting uh, oak leaves. This is a 14 karat yellow gold dial that I'm using. Some time ago, I had said that I was going to make this and didn't get to it, so I thought this would be a good time. And so what's happened is, of course, I've drawn the design, uh, cut the outline of all of the leaves, remove the background quite deep although this is not a real thick dial it's only about uh, half a mil or something so you know um, I have to be careful and you can also see that I've got it pressed into this uh, aluminum here and then I actually have hammered this in to hold it because if I don't uh, it'll stretch on me and um, then it gets all deformed. Uh, it may stretch a little bit this way, but what will happen then is um, I'll be able to heat it and, and flatten it back out again. Um, of course, you know, if you're doing something thicker, steel, whatever, you know, the process is the same. And it really doesn't matter um, then about, you know, it getting stretched. just happens to be that these uh, watch dials are kind of fussy. I've got a few of these done. And the process that I use, I'm going to go through the whole process, um, involves just, you know, basically a couple of tools. Once I've, I've cut away all the background and everything, um, then a lot of times I'll cut this kind of center vein in. And then I like to go to rotary, although you can use, you know, gravers uh, that are rounded or anything you want. Um, and you can see on some of these I've already done preliminary uh, shaping and you know all I'm doing here is just kind of roughing it in in other words I'm I'm not gonna sit here and and try to grind this all perfect I mean if I was gonna do that then I might as well just you know use rotary and do the whole thing but um, rather than just use displacement um, for those that may or may not understand that when you you know pound metal or roll it or anything you can't really compress metal so it's got to move it's going to move in some direction um, so you could use displacement in other words I can come in here and I could just um, hammer this heavily and still have it you know go, uh, form in here and push up you know some of the the sidewalls and that but I'll end up having to do a lot of trimming and stuff anyway so um, you know, again, this is just to give it a preliminary shape. And I think about what I want it to end up looking like. Um, remember that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, if you look at oak leaves and things in nature, um, you'll see that, you know, they're not usually as quite as perfect as we uh, tend to engrave them and draw them and stuff. Sometimes some of them are real odd looking when you look at them individually. But, you know, nothing is symmetrical and perfect about them. So... Um, just keep that in mind and really just think about how you want it to look, how you want it to flow, okay? Um, do you want it to be concave in here and let the edges come up? Do you want to roll that over? So another thing that happens that, that people do when it comes to sculpting things, whether it be oak leaves or anything, is they tend to try to cut all their outlines perfect. And you really don't need to do that because you'll end up recutting them anyway. You want to get them close, um, but you know when you start, when I start hammering this, you'll see that there'll be displacement and stuff here. And when all that happens, I'll end up having to trim some of it back. So trying to get it perfect really uh, is unnecessary um, as far as the outline. You just need to get it, you know fairly close and and don't worry if you've nicked your leaves and things up when you're cutting especially for using gravers and such again I I used uh, rotary for a lot of the background I start with the gravers and then I go in with rotary you know and finish it up so um, and I haven't textured any of that yet either so I usually wait to the end and the reason for that is because sometimes when you start working on this you'll find that you may have to go deeper in some areas than maybe you started so you know i leave that in case i have to and then i can do that and i do the final texturing at the very end all right so then you know just as i'm showing in here with the rotary you do some you know preliminary shaping and then 
to do all the hammering and forming, uh, I've got like one tool, maybe two shapes that I use. Basically, uh, I refer to it as the bean tool. It's kind of, it basically, it's an oval or elongated oval. Um, this one's made out of a high-speed steel graver. And what I do is I like to grind them in so that they flare. Um, and then what I do is I texture them. And a textured punch is going to really make a difference in, in your work. Uh, hitting them on a, on a diamond wheel, um, like a two, this is probably 260. Uh, you don't want it too coarse. And you can do some finer ones if you want a smoother finish. So I do that in various uh, sizes. So it depends on, you know, what I'm doing. When you really want to move metal, you're going to have a small size. And when you want to smooth and planish, then you want a bigger size. And, and what happens is the force that you create um, when you make a smaller diameter like this increases a lot more than you think. Um, I'm not sure without measuring this, but... I'm going to say that this larger one is probably two times as large as the small one. And so when, by reducing that to the smaller size, what happens is you increase the force by like four times, not just two times. So, you know, again, think and try to work smart. Um, when you want to really move some metal, use a much smaller punch. And when you want to smooth, then use a larger punch. And that can be said as well in stone setting or, or anything. And then one other shape that I use uh, is kind of a marquee shape, uh, like a marquee diamond. And I find this one, again, it's the same thing. I like it to flare, but I like that shape because um, it lets me get into certain places. The reason I like this kind of flared edge is that, and, and these things do wear a little bit and you have to keep retexturing them but I like to have that come over so when I want to get next to something or in grooves and stuff I can do that easily with these um, and that's really all I use is just a variety of those um, others you know have a lot of other shapes that they like and again that's you know that's all personal preference that I just find that for anything that I've done and do uh, this the, you know I would say this bean shape is really probably the one that I can, you know, use the most. So, all right, so let's, uh, it really won't take a lot of time to do this, but just to give you an idea, um, I'm going to go ahead and pick one of these and start working with it. So, I think I'll go with this one here. I get a little bit closer. All right, so with this, I may start by coming in and accentuating that line a little bit and with the tool with it with the end set it really I mean you can get just as much force on metal um, I mean steel I should say or whatever else as you can on gold it, it's not that the gold is soft so it's easier to move um, all the metal pretty much moves the same the only difference is you may end up having to um, you know, increase your pressure or put in a heavier striker head. Uh, I have the small one in at this point. So basically, I'm, I'm thinking about the how I want to shape this. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to actually now come over the edge and roll this down. And there was a little discussion recently on the forum about you know which model of end set and I you know this is just the regular end set and again I I like to be able to go slow and fast whenever I need to um, you know there's times if when it gets larger and I can go a little bit faster you know to smooth things out and there's times when I want to come in here and take my time and work an area so I have that choice Um, as far as there being advantages to ha picking a, a pulse rate, I, you know, again, for some things, I would imagine that, um, you know, that would be true. Um, I so far haven't found that I need it. Um, 
I think that Lee Griffiths, though, made a good point uh, on the post on the forum was that, you know, people tend to, I mean, you can, with this model, you can just hold it wherever you want as far as the pulse rate goes. But people tend to want to just go faster all the time. So um, you have to be a little bit, I don't know, maybe, it, maybe you have to be a little bit more disciplined. I think the work just will dictate what you need to do. And everybody's different. Some people, you know, want things to go faster and they do, they'll do better. And others will want it much slower. And so you have that choice. All right. So, again, I'm just coming in and... And actually, when I do a lot of this, what I'll do in the beginning is um, I'll come in and I won't try to make it perfect. I'll just come in and, and kind of hammer it to give it some form to start with. And then I'll go back in and, and work it a little bit slower. So in here, you know, I might want to deep in that Then when I want things to be smoother, what I do is I kind of hold it down and drag it. And then it just moves the metal kind of like clay. Um, the other thing you can do is you can hold it just a hair above so that the stroke itself really smacks it on the surface. Um, and now whether you want it perfectly smooth or you want to you know, have some of the, let's say, hammering uh, strikes in there, um, that's again, that's a personal preference and both of them look great. Um, you know, some people like one, others like it another way. Some of them want it all polished, so. And then once I have a, you can, so you can see what I've done here is I, you know, I brought this one down more than, than the original just scooped out area that I did with the burr. Um, this one and this one and also that one there. These I'm leaving a little higher. I've got a little bit more of a kind of a fold in here. And um, it's not perfectly smooth, but now the next step is to actually decrease my pressure or I'll take out the striker head and it will still, it, it won't move the metal as um, easily, but it'll, of course, with less power, it'll smooth it much more. Uh, and that's basically it, you know, and it's kind of fun because you just, you know, you kind of create the whole thing as you go. And then I do come back in and I do shade. So put some shade lines down in the center here. Uh, I just like the way it looks. So you can see it's a lot of fun. This is one now. And then I'll come back in also and trim these edges, all right, which I've done on this one. Uh, I haven't shaded it, but you can see that.